Sonic Underground Episode 35 The Big Melt A polar bear looks at the bounty hunters through night vision binoculars in the icy mountain, and he says he's gotta get word to the others. I like that people are being useful freedom fighters other than the main heroes. And this is better than AOSTH, because he's not immediately portrayed as a stupid idiot. After a pointless song blindsides you, we see Manic surfing in the beach, somehow surfing ahead underwater instead of being swept away by the wave. Magical medallion, I guess, but it doesn't look like he's wearing his medallion, and either is Sonic. Isn't that asking for trouble? Sonya presses a button to lower a bridge so that she can ride her bike over to the top of Sonic's van. Sonic wears sunglasses, telling her to stop worrying during his vacation. Why does he think he deserves a vacation when he hasn't done anything important? Sonya tells her brothers that Robotnik's troops are scouting out the polar ice caps, and she says something about a submarine too. Why is it that Sonic and Manic call themselves wimps? That's out of character for the sake of a joke. And all does is drive home how they're not hero material because they haven't taken down Robotnik yet. Robotnik plans to put all of Mobius underwater just to spite Sonic. Uh, won't that inconvenience him to short circuit all of his robots and take him down for good? What about the Robian that he's ruling over? And the, and the rich? Where is he gonna live? How will they grow crops and raise animals for animal products? What an idiot! As he tries to destroy the polar ice caps for the sake of having a plot, the heroes ride a van there, fortunately wearing winter clothes. Sonya says it's 15 degrees warmer than normal in this place, using a device to do so. Sonya tells Sonic to stop whining, that's hypocritical. And Sonic arbitrarily thinks that Robotnik wouldn't be here, and Manic correctly guesses Robotnik's plan, showing how predictable it is. His siblings still believe him, naturally because that'd be a stupid idea. Couldn't we have some other villain do this plan? A villain that doesn't want to rule over the world? Maybe an insane villain who wants to take the rest of the world with them. But no. The guys are boiling water, melts a part of the ice, and sends the brothers away on an ice blow and the ice Sonya is standing on falls off with her on it. Logically, they should be completely screwed by this point. Sonic says he hates water, and their ice flow heads towards some ice wall, being sent away by a current that sends them over a waterfall, where they're perfectly fine after falling off it. Sonya gets threatened by a tidal wave, but somehow doesn't fall over on her, and decides to send her flying. She slides down some ice, at least dramatic music is playing, and the heroes are in danger, so it feels exciting despite being total padding. This is how you do padding right. She finally summons her keyboard and blasts lasers to progress past the ice wall, blasting a hole in it, and she finally lands on an ice floor where she hears people talking. Then a trap door below her goes out, and she avoids falling in, and a penguin sneezes walking up the stairs. It's novel to have a character have a cold for the whole episode. So is it gonna matter at all? Some penguin people see Sonya's reflection on the wall and they bow down to her talking in whiny voices. If they recognize her, why did one of them call her little lady, little lady, an offender? Sonic and Manic get out of the sea and meet the Yeti again, but then they run away, again. Why isn't the Yeti being used as a bodyguard for the Oracle's cave instead of being pointless? He never does anything, does he? Sonya is somehow mistaken for a penguin queen named Sauna. The penguin says that the legend says their queen will return, and when she does, the weather will get warmer. Why, why can't they just recognize her as Princess Sonya? I mean, they do live all the way up in the North Pole, I guess. Huh? There's already a statue of her, but they're calling her by the wrong name. There's nothing in the prophecy book about the queen having any brothers, but that's not an excuse for them to refuse to care about her brothers. They're not saying that they think the soul of their dead queen went into her and brought her here. That would have made this make sense because there's magic in this universe. Instead, they seem to mistake her for someone she couldn't possibly be. 
Robotnik's submarine goes into a hidden place, and Manic sneezes and is heard by the bad guys, and Sleet looks for him. When did the hero sneak out on the sub? Sure is lucky that, for no reason at all, the sub never sank into the water with them in it. Sonya appreciates being treated like a queen, wearing a nice robe, and has to remind herself that she's a freedom fighter and can't stay here. The penguin tells her that their city is melting, and one of them asks her if she's doing this because she's mad at them, but fortunately he's not mad at her, just scared. She gets them to agree to help her find her brothers because they're desperate to impress her. I like seeing them treat her like a queen. Sonic and Manic make a whirlwind tornado that sends the bad guys away and take off. So how are the bad guys a threat when the heroes can do that any time there's a way to escape? So far, a whole lot of nothing has happened. Sonya presses the penguins by pulling out her keyboard. Anyways, her music carries over the air and her brothers hear it when they didn't hear her calling out to them. I guess she can make her music as loud as she wants. And if she wants it, the music can choose to not hurt the ears of the people near it. So because it's a magic keyboard, I can understand this better than an Archie or one note play from Sonic's acoustic guitar carried all the way to Robotropolis. Sonic and Manic reunite with Sonya because of the music, and just because she has brothers, the, he the, pe the penguins lose hope that she's the long-lost queen. I don't think the prophecy book said she didn't have brothers. It just didn't mention that because they were important. Sonic says the heating plant is on the other side of that ice wall, and he says his sense of direction is perfect, so I guess he'll be wrong for a predictable joke. He spin dashes into the wall and gets sent out of the wall because of water, and he spits it out. Somehow the water doesn't proceed to forever spurt out of that hole he made and start drowning them. Maybe his spin dash only made a really tiny hole in the deepest part of the hole he drilled, and that hole was deep enough to spray water. But only a tiny bit. They find the Robo Factory with robots in it, and Sonic runs around in a circle, regularly hitting the wall, which gets hit by lasers. This manages to wreak havoc on the factory, and Sonya says that's the last one, with their friends putting explosives they somehow have on the control panel. How did they get those? Why would- Oh, right, Robotnik wants to destroy the polar ice caps. So I guess that's where the explosives came from. Usually there's no explanation for why they have them at all. Why does Sonic warn the bounty hunters about the plant blowing up? Self-righteousness, I guess, but he shouldn't tell them. Worst freedom fighter ever! All he did was ensure that he'd have to keep fighting Robotnik by making sure that he'd escape in his sub. That idiot! He could have taken down Robotnik right then and there! The episode ends with the heroes relaxing in a hot spring that's in the polar ice caps outdoors, somehow. Where's the cold air, the, the cold wind? I guess it's from the hot water geysers that are being used to melt the ice caps, but still, the cold air of the place. And the fact that it's in the North Pole, where the sun is hitting at an angle. There's no reason that they should be warm here. They're not indoors in a place with indoor heating. Robotnik's plan made no sense. Sure, he wants to swipe Sonic by making a water world, but is he really that stupid to not think of all the ways this could inconvenience him? Really? Can he swim? This would have made a lot more sense if it was a different villain. Like, say, a merman who wants to take over the world by making it all his territory. That King Triton from Adventures of Sonic would make a better villain here. And once the heroes get to the North Pole, there's a whole lot of padding where they're trying to reunite with each other after some ice platform broke. But fortunately, it didn't feel too much like padding because they were in danger and there was dramatic music playing. Sonya was always in motion, going down the current of the water, for example. It wasn't a terrible episode, and it didn't frustrate me, so I guess it was alright, but a lot of things didn't make sense. Why was Sonya mistaken for a penguin queen when she's not a penguin? The weather getting warmer doesn't make it make sense. I mean, couldn't they have just blamed that on global warming? Which logically should have started with Robotnik's pollution? But I still liked seeing her get treated like a princess. The premise was interesting. It was certainly less predictable than what I thought it would be with the ice setting, where the heroes would go defend the Oracle's cave from Robotnik again. They're in an icy place after all.